The land, like us, is alive. <laughs> you don't have to venture far from our cities and towns to slow down and go back to nature. So refreshing. You may know Aaron as an actor and descendant of Aranda and Arabana people, but nature is his medicine. I'm a writer. They have that mythic fairy tale quality. And my inspiration is the magic of the natural world. Come with us to the Red Centre, desert country, where the earth chases the sky, pushing the horizon as far as your eye can see. Connection to country is strong and unbroken. Here we learn what country means to two Aranda men who care for and protect their sacred land. We encounter a real desert oasis and we stargaze with an astrophysicist from one of Australia's most famous impact craters. Is there a place in nature that gives you peace, that gives you comfort? It revitalizes your energy by just simply being there, as if you just belong. Our journey starts east of Alice Springs, where we discover the majestic Trevena Gorge. Traversing to the west, we reach the hidden oasis of Palm Valley and Norla, where we view the Milky Way and learn its stories. The Arundu people have lived in and around Mbantua, or as it's known to most, Alice Springs, in excess of 20,000 years. With Larunda, there are five estates. Mbantua, Central Larunda. Antulia, Eastern Larunda. Ilpma, Western Larunda. Totam, Southern Larunda. Alinya Tharapa, Lower Southern Larunda. Each responsible for their country to which they belong. Altura is our creator. Altura has no origin. Altura is mysterious and is embodied in all things. These mountain ridges, chasms, gorges and trees are sacred to the Aranda people. East of Alice Springs is a place known to the Eastern Aranda as Arlakinj, also known as Trefina. Here comes that gold. That's oh, beautiful. Light really makes it, doesn't it? Yeah. It changes the colour and the shadows. I love how it just reveals the textures across the land. Yeah, it's alive. And what I'm really struck by here, standing here, is 
the sense of strength in this place. This country feels so strong. Most of this gorge is made of quartzite, which is the most physically durable rock found on the Earth's surface. Yeah. That iconic red dirt in Central Australia. Mm. I mean, that's millions and millions of years old. Yeah. And that red pigmentation, I mean, it's like that because there's high levels of iron oxidising in the soil. And it's happening today. So that red dirt is pretty much rusting. It's living. Yeah. I grew up around here, and my grandmother, my mother's mother, yeah. Nana Katie, she comes from an Anguilla community, 150 kilometres north of here. Mm. Ancestral tracks and songlines that run all the way along this country, linking Aboriginal people to this region, and sometimes right across Australia. They teach us and they guide us. And this place is just teeming with life. Mm. You know, right across this country, it's dancing. Mm. You can hear it. Or you can see it. And if you just stay quiet for a moment and just listen, you can feel it. This ghost gun is estimated to be over 300 years old and is the largest ghost gun in Australia. I've never seen a tree like this. I feel a little intimidated. It's trees within a tree. Oh, definitely. It just owns this place. Yeah. You know, these trees, their root system, they extend as far underground as that leafy canopy. So, what you see there is what exists under the ground. So they mirror themselves. Their root system is fine but broad, oh. and they take advantage of all the cracks. So when the precious rain falls, this tree will soak up as much as it can. It certainly looks healthy. Yeah, certainly been drinking a lot. Can we go closer? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I don't think my neck can go back far enough. It just gets bigger as you get closer. <sighs> you know, I spent my childhood in Alice Springs. I've seen a lot of ghost gums. But I've never seen anything like this. No, me neither. I've never, ever seen a ghost gum this spectacular. It's, it's blinding. It's dazzling. It's... It's a giant. It's a giant. Yeah. It's beautiful. You know, these trees are also important in ceremony for Adunda people. And they're strongly protected. I mean, generations believe that the beautiful glow of this gum at night is evidence that living spirits exist. Mm. It sure does have a great spirit. 
This is real strong feeling of protection. Mm. You know what? I almost had it. Oh, go on. No, no come on. No, look, you're so close. <laughs> I'm just a Lena. <laughs> I'm a Lena. Can't change now. Look at the view. It's been here, seen all this the last 300 years. Mm. Eastern Arundel of Paul Williams is Nadmarakatuya, a traditional landowner for Trafina Gorge. His cousin, Damien Ryder, is a Kuringlungamaba, a caretaker of the land. They are responsible for looking after this country and the ancestors. Wera. 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 Hello. Hello. Ah, it's just beautiful country. It's a special place. Yes. Yep. We feel real happy to be in this yeah. beautiful country, but real happy. We're connected with this country, it keeps us healthy. Yeah. And when I see the trees, the ancestors, they respond back to us. They are really talking to us. Yeah. And showing showing us that they're here with us. Yeah. You know, we, we keep a country is strong and the culture, we don't, we don't want to lose it. Yeah. Mm. And encourage the younger generation to be like us. So we're sort of like a role model for them as well, see? Yes. The younger generation got to sort of step up as well and sort of mm. follow us. What tips have you got for people who don't have strong connection to land, what what would you say to them? We do have spirits here, like you know, that can listen. Mm. Wherever you go, you gotta talk to the land. The land is connecting to them to fall in love with this country. Yeah. You know? And maybe they'll they probably go away somewhere and then next year they'll come back. Yeah, they keep so coming they, back. Yeah, they keep the coming. The land back. is still calling them to come back. In my 20s, I spent some time living and working in Mutajuli, a community near Uluru. The first time I came to desert country, I fell in love with this place, just like Paul and Damien said. And coming back here, I feel all those same emotions all over again. It's overwhelming and it's beautiful. And the quietness and the fullness of spirit to return, to listen to country call you and come back, is radically freeing and really beautiful. I love getting my shoes off and walking barefoot. Some people claim that the simple action of walking barefoot across the natural ground allows your body to electrically reconnect with the earth, providing benefits to your health and well-being. Whether true or not, I really enjoy the feeling of grounding. Share your grounding experience with us at hashtag back to nature. Are you? We've arrived in Western Aranda country, where one of the largest water sources, the Lurapinta, or Fink River, has followed the same course for 100 million years. It is said to be one of the oldest rivers in the world. Like many rivers in the region, 
the Fink is an ephemeral river, only flowing after heavy rainfall and then remaining a dry riverbed for the rest of the year. When I'm on a riverbed like this, I'm trying to make stories with river stones and pebbles. This one reminds me of a heart. If I keep looking here. This one reminds me a bit of a mermaid story, which is beautiful in this old place of water. A short journey from Fink River is a place known as Morlankinya, Palm Valley. Home to an estimated 12,000 red cabbage tree palms. Arriving 15,000 years ago, they are the only palm found growing in the desert. Usually, they're found along the coast in the tropical north. Ah, oh, I'm just thinking about how the common misperception about the centre of Australia is that it's like any other desert in the world, that it's empty sand dunes, when here we are, and we're in an oasis. and I'm struggling to put together the red rocks and the ghost gums with these exotic palm trees. It reminds me of the palm tree lined boulevards or the mirages in old movies. Well, these palms are older than the golden age of Hollywood, that's for sure. The Western Islander people believe that the, the palms were born from the sparks of the fire from Urubanya, which was northeast of Alice Springs. It blew the sparks across the country and they landed here forming these palms. It's so beautiful. If you look at the shape of the fronds and they look like sparks, sparks. Yeah. like explosions, little flickers of flame. Experiencing thunderstorms during a desert winter is especially rare and beautiful. The smell of rain hitting the ground livens your senses. The colour of the earth, trees and rocks change before your very eyes. These arid lands receive less than 250 millimetres of rain each year. The fresh water nourishes the landscape, replenishes the water sources, encouraging regeneration and new life. Leaving out of the country when I was younger, my ancestors have continued to call me back to this land. I wasn't born on Earth. I was born in the sky. My mother was on a flight from Adelaide to Alice Springs. As the plane flew over Lake Eyre, Arabana country, my grandfather's country, I arrived. Because of this beginning, I've never felt tethered to country. But this land offered me support. It allowed me the space and the time to dream. 
My connectedness and my sense of belonging has been a lifelong journey. From Palm Valley, we've traveled 80 kilometers west to this majestic desert oak gully. As desert oaks send their strong roots to tap the water table, they begin life thin and straight. Once reliable water has been sourced, they begin to take their adult form spreading branches and transforming into a tree with weeping foliage. Stop, stop, listen to that. That's beautiful. It's like we're near the ocean. Imagine this forest once they tapped into that water. Mm -hmm. I feel a real sense of familiarity when I'm with them. Living in Mutajulu, I would seek out trees like these after work every day. And there were three particular desert oaks. Mm -hmm. And they were very grandmotherly in their stature. And they gave me counsel and solace just to sit with them. To think through what they've gone through mm. to get big and strong. I connected really strongly with these trees and I developed a very deep sense of respect for them. They're just like warriors or soldiers just guarding the land or protecting whatever's beyond it. Maybe Norala, Goss Bluff, is what those warrior desert oaks are guarding. Norla is a special place to the Western Islander. In the dreaming, a group of sky women danced as stars in the Milky Way. One of the women placed her baby in a wooden coolerman. As the women continued dancing, the coolerman fell and the baby plunged into the earth. The force of the baby striking the ground drove these rocks upwards. And this crater was created. Carly Noon is a Gamilaroi woman and an astrophysicist who has studied the Milky Way. When I look at the night sky, I'm reminded of something a Gamilaroi elder once told me, and it's something that I know is echoed in many nations all across Australia, and that is that what is on the land is reflected in the sky, mm. and what is in the sky is reflected on the land. The Narola story is a fantastic narrative of what happened here. Astrophysicists and geologists tell us that an object, a meteor or an asteroid, crashed here 142 million years ago. And all we have left now are these amazing vertical rocks surrounding us. For the Western Islander, the Kulaman and the baby are falling from the Milky Way. I mean, that story still lives on today. You know, the parents searching for their child, the mother, the evening star, and the father, the morning star. I think it tells me that even though we're 
usually taught that the Western knowledge system and Indigenous knowledge systems, that they're different. They're really not that different. We're really looking at the same thing, just in a different way. Yeah. It's really heartbreaking to think that the mother and father are eternally searching for the baby they lost, and we are standing on that land where the baby fell. Travelling through this country in this way has taught me a great deal. I belong to this land, this country, this planet, this cosmos. I'm connected to billions of stars and planets that are floating through space. The rivers, the mountains, the red earth of Islander country. It's a part of me. It revitalises me and prepares me for my next adventure. We can see extending all the way across the sky, the disk of the Milky Way. If we look right up the top, we can see just above Jupiter there, there's like a C shape made out of the stars, and they're quite faint. But that is the, the Kuleman constellation from the Norala story. Wow. We often call it Corona Australis, meaning the Southern Crown. To see that Kuleman the baby was in it really gives you a deeper connected sense mm. of the place we're in. Yeah. It teaches us so much about our country and really reinforces that connection we have to the sky. There's something really magical about observing how things are similar mm. instead of how they are set apart. Mm. We all belong to this universe. We're connected to this planet, this space. It's who we are. Being back on country not only restores the spirit, it also stirs up an appetite. Before heading out of town, grab yourself some kangaroo sausages from your local butcher. We're gonna eat the sausages with wattle seed johnny cakes. Take some roasted ground wattle seeds and add them to flour. A pinch of salt, splash in some water and stir until there's a soft dough. Put a generous spoonful into a hot oil pan. Check your sausages. And when ready, put the sausage on a johnny cake with a helping of bush tomato relish to top it off.